Well, let, let's make it worse. Um, <laughs> let's go to SmackDown, where we really got a lot of talk. No, um, this was the final SmackDown, uh, March 31st, before the big first night of WrestleMania. And as we mentioned on Raw, they couldn't really do a lot more because there wasn't a lot that had been left undone, right? And so it was just kind of maintenance stuff to make sure everybody knows who, you know, everybody's still mad at. And they opened this SmackDown with the Usos coming out and to do an in-ring interview, and they spoke for about 15 seconds, and here comes Sami Zayn's music. And oh, 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 oh I, I, there's so many O tunes that I've now, I, they're all interchangeable to me. Chris Jericho invented that. I heard that from his own chicken lips. Um, but they, so here comes Sammy and Kevin and they get in the ring and I just said, you know, they've pretty much said and done everything. There's not a lot that they haven't done or said. So that's when <laughs> Kevin and Sammy say tonight, we're going to make sure that there's nothing left unsaid, <laughs> which is an excuse for them to talk for 10 minutes. Cause here's the thing. I'm not saying this was a bad interview, but they've built this thing up betrayal and, you know, vengeance and family. And when the two opposing forces or teams just get in the ring together, all of them with microphones, and stand there and talk with no announcer, no referees, no authority figure or commit, no Dana White in between the fighters at the photo op at the weigh-in, how mad can they be? They're standing there fucking talking trash to each other. Just hit somebody. Right, it, it with no structure of a sports-based presentation television program, and the guys to, for, and I mean, I normally we just gloss over this because it's so commonplace. They've been doing it for so long because there's really no grudge matches anymore. But this one, it's kind of a grudge match. They've they've been firing on all cylinders, and they hit their magic formula. So it stood out more that they're, they're just all with microphones just talking to each other because they can't fight yet because that's on the pay-per-view. But we got to have them out here on TV for the ratings. And we didn't put a lot of thought into it. We just let them tell each other off. It was a time filler. There was no new ground broken or anything that whipped you up into a frenzy. As Sammy basically again tried to put doubt in the Usos' minds as to whether Roman would be loyal to them or not, and tells him when you know when we win the belts, you guys can go back to being themselves or yourselves, right? And then the Usos tell Sammy he'll lose, and Kevin's going to turn on him again. And they gave the heels the final word, and all four of them stared at each other, and that was pretty much it. I. Th <laughs> There's almost a danger, and it wasn't as prevalent in the territory days when it was only an hour TV or the promotions only had one TV show per week, or it just there wasn't this constant expectation that everybody that's wrestling on the big show will have interaction on every program. But there's a danger sometimes when you put guys in your hot match in in you when you put them together with each other they're interacting with each other too much before the the big match it kind of takes the edge off because people are well well fuck if they were that fucking mad they'd have done something about it by now you see what i'm saying you think it would have been better to have each team get a win at different points in the show and then follow it with a promo possibly they had plenty of time to do that because of these meaningless four ways that prefaced the meaningless four-way tags that they, they were, were going to have on WrestleMania. But again, that's kind of a rule. They've got a checklist that they have to have this match or that talent exposed to, to you know, lead to the pay-per-view. But does anybody give a shit about the four-team matches? No, male or female. They're just stuck on the show because they want to get those guys a payoff and don't want them bitching that they weren't on WrestleMania. So it might have been better than just have... You know, but then they're thinking, well, the ratings, we want to get the ratings, so they they should be in the ring with each other. But then you kind of take the edge off the, the, the bigger deal. I don't know. Am I being too critical? I mean, you're being critical. I mean, too critical. Who knows? 
It's in the eye of the beholder. But I think there's a real point there because there have been a few times, this one specifically, where as hot as things are, it felt like there was a week where they really didn't have like too much. It was like, okay, let's just general interaction on this week's show. <laughs> and to what I said earlier, if you had had Owens and Zayn get a nice conclusive victory over some team and then follow it up with a fired up promo in front of that house in the town that the show's going to be in, that was a hot crowd, and then have the Usos do the same thing, does that build up interest in the pay-per-view more than just a debate with no touching? I don't know. Yes. And no resolution. But anyway, 